Dun, 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 dun. Welcome to the Healthy Conscience Podcast, where a healthy conscience helps you be health conscious. My name is Lynn Lee. I am a registered dietitian for a pediatric hospital. And Vince over here is Mr. Husband. Yeah, I am a registered husband. <laughs> he is a registered husband. But today's topic is a little bit relevant to the times right now. We are in the times of self-isolation, quarantine, COVID-2019, or as you know it, COVID-19. That's why it's called 19? Yeah, it started in uh, November of 19. Oh, I didn't know that. Ooh, I'm, that makes I, think, sense. I think that's why. I'm learning so many things. What did you learn? We just started this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, from from you working in the hospital. From, oh, from me working in the hospital. I didn't know this prior to COVID-19, the announcement of COVID-19, mm -hmm. but I thought the coronavirus was something new at first. Oh, okay. And then you told me that you had prior coronavirus <laughs> patients. I'm like, what? So what's interesting is that when the whole like media blew up about oh coronavirus da, 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 coronavirus coronavirus and they kept calling it coronavirus which technically it is a coronavirus and i was just like what is the big deal i have kiddos with coronavirus all the time like all the time all year long and then come to find out it's a new strain of coronavirus because somebody just kind of, I was at work, somebody came up to me, did you hear about the coronavirus? And I'm, I looked at them like, yeah, what about it? Which one? But like, it didn't even strike to me as which one because I'm so used to the one that I see all the time. Uh, and then like, they were just talking about it and I was like, dumbfounded because I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, are you talking about like a different strain? And then they just looked at me like, what are you talking about? And then I looked into it. I was like, okay, there is a new strain that has been discovered. And so when I told Vince about it, he's like, oh, so coronavirus is a type of virus. And the general scientific name that they call it is coronavirus because they have like a spikes that kind of looks like a crown mm -hmm. around. So they called it coronavirus. So when Lynn told me this, it kind of like, I was like, oh. That all makes sense. And then when they started calling it COVID-19, then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, I understand. There's other types like, is it MERS and uh -huh. SARS also? SARS was, yeah. Coronavirus. Yeah, so there are different types of coronavirus, but they're just named a certain something. Uh, so now they name it COVID-19. They um, specify, like now you know exactly which one it is. It's kind of interesting. I can't remember the common one that I see in the hospital, but now like when I chart review for patients and stuff, I'll see coronavirus, but then they'll like put all of the codes behind it so that you mm. know it's not COVID-19. Uh, so it's kind of interesting because I can't remember the letters and the numbers behind. I was like, the N6519. I don't know. Just made that one up. COVID-2018. COVID since before COVID-19. COVID-2005. Oh, it was not caught COVID. It's called Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You want to know what's hilarious? Though? What? All the like, like bogus um, conspiracy theories. About <laughs> <it>. <laughs> like, I mean, I, like, honestly, I, I just mentioned, I didn't know this prior to it being called COVID-19 mm -hmm. or, you know, that, or even just doing a simple Google search on what that is. Yeah. Um, but there's all these like people that are so like, I don't know. It almost feels it's like sent out by the government. It almost feels like they're thirsty to be like the next conspiracy theorist, like person that finds something. Yeah. That like there's this one video of this guy. He has a Lysol bottle. Mm -hmm. and if you look at any Lysol bottle, it says like what it kills: viruses, mm -hmm. bacteria, flu, and all that stuff. And it says human coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And this guy's like tripping out, like, oh my gosh. Lysol's known about this three years prior to the coronavirus coming Because I've had this Lysol thing for like four years and I never use it. I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, dog, do a, do a Google search. <laughs> like, like, why would you make this video and publish it? Like, Yeah, before actually doing the research and like, understanding. It's like, you sound so stupid right now. <laughs> like... I mean, like I mentioned, I didn't know this before, but I wouldn't make a conspiracy theorist video as if I'm this expert finding this like new discovery. Like I discovered a new dinosaur or something. Oh, if you <laughs> discover a new dinosaur, you better make a video about that. 
And then the, <laughs> there's this, uh, you see the other one about the Korean drama? No. There's like a, there's a Korean drama that was re- uh, released in last year, mm-hmm. two, no, 2018. And uh, one of the people in the video has coronavirus. And oh my gosh. So, Are you serious? So this guy, he's like, I don't, he has like a English accent or something, or I don't know what he, some, some type of European accent, mm-hmm. but he's filming this video, video, Korean drama. Yeah. And he's like tripping out, like, they knew before they knew two years ago <laughs> it's blah, blah, blah. he's like tripping i'm like doc <laughs> and it probably doesn't help that covid19 was like big in korea a few weeks ago like yeah like that was like one of the top countries before it like expanded over to the states <laughs> it's funny because like these people are posting these videos as if they're like discovering something and it's like if you like literally type in coronavirus online, mm-hmm. it kind of it has a Wikipedia thing that pops up and tells you. There's tons. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's tons of like news that even Wikipedia that. is more accurate than this this video. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Wikipedia. I mean, honestly, Wikipedia is like in general pretty accurate for things, not like scientific like research. Yeah. Not real actual research, but if it's just like looking for the history of something really quick. Or hmm. just the definition. Or the definition of it, Cause yeah. Because I, I did a simple Google search, Google search, and it was just like, coronavirus is a type of virus that yeah. ha- has known for the crown. That's why mm-hmm. it's called corona. And COVID-19 is a type of coronavirus. So yeah. I was like, oh, my goodness, mind blown. Mm. <laughs> just knowing that, now all these other things seem pretty stupid. <laughs> so it's like one of those things where just quick, quick um, research will help. I mean, if you're doing like actual research on like scientific thing, I wouldn't say use Wikipedia. Like that's not allowed in school. Yeah. But um, for general knowledge, if you're going to make a video to like, Lysol knew this from the beginning, then probably you should double check. Yeah. Why Lysol did that to kind of see. Conspiracy theorists, do your research. (laughs) You know, some of these things I, I question the... A lot of the um, the ethics and the morals. I don't know what it's coming from. These conspiracy theories, like they're because they're questioning ethics and morals. But I'm like at the same time, like logically thinking, does that sound right to you? Yeah, you know what? Like social media has done. Ha! Made everyone an expert. Oh uh, yeah, that. <laughs> but it also reveals how like stupid your friends are. Um. So, <laughs> anyways, let's talk about stupid things. The things that have made me a little bit angry, a little bit ticked lately is like, as a registered dietitian, yes, I am an essential employee. Yes, I am an essential interdisciplinary team member taking care of a patient, especially if a patient comes in with COVID-19. Um, people are like, why are you still going to work, Lynn? Like, I kid you not. I've been asked several times, like, why are you still going to work? Why is it still important for people to have weight loss? If da, da, da. I'm like, excuse me, first of all, that's not what I do. I don't tell patients to lose weight. Yes, in an outpatient setting, I talk about general healthy eating. I don't specifically talk about weight loss, but I talk about weight management for better management of your overall health because they have comorbid conditions. Anyways, I get asked all the time, like, can't you just call them? Can't you just not go to work? Can't why why are you needed? Like, what's the purpose of having a dietitian in the hospital? Mm-hmm. That's not necessary. I think it's just they don't understand the role of a dietitian. And that is where I'm going to do a little bit of explanation here. Just a touchles. Okay. okay. So a patient comes in with COVID-19, any kind of respiratory distress any kind of condition where they get a tube shoved down their throat into their trachea so that they can breathe. And this is called mechanical ventilation or people call it life support. I know I explained that in a very crass way, but I'm just going to say it like that. That sounds pretty scary. I'm sorry, Vince. (laughs) But people come in with some respiratory distress, such as COVID-19. They need some help with breathing. Mm -hmm. So they need to be put on a ventilator. So a machine, a tube is put down into their throat, into their trachea so that they can breathe. The machine helps them breathe. Now, there's a tube there. Patient cannot swallow. For the most part, the patient is sedated. 
sedated with a lot of medication so that they are put to sleep so that they don't feel all of this pain. They don't feel all of this because it's not comfortable. During that time, what do you think? How do you think they're getting nutrition? Honestly, think about that. I'll just give it a quick silent second. (sighs) Anyways, but if you really think about it, nutrition doesn't just magically happen. You just don't out of nowhere stay nourished. Your body just doesn't do that. This is where a dietitian steps in. This is where we choose specialized like nutrition for the patient, dependent on what's going on, dependent on if they have some other type of condition, dependent on whether or not they can break down this type of formula or do they need a more specialized formula. Mm. Now, when I say formula, I'm talking about another tube is stuck down either your throat, either your mouth or your nose to go all the way into your stomach. So one tube goes into your breathing or breathing, one tube goes into your stomach so that you can get fed. Formula is chose to basically mimic food to go down those tubes to go directly into the stomach so that the patient can have nutrition. These are some of the things. I'm just kind of touching like the tip of the iceberg when I explain this because there's so much more to the picture of what a dietitian has to do to assess the patient. So what we've been hearing is that a lot of these patients who are not doing very well is because they have comorbid conditions, high risk factors, they're older. Most of our older population have a underlying malnutrition entity to them already. Like think about it. If you think about Opa, is he eating well? Was he eating well when he was living at home by himself? I don't know. You don't know. But when we saw him, when we saw him during like holidays and stuff, was he eating well? I still don't know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are not good at I mean, maybe it's just something I pay attention to because I am concerned about his nutrition. So I noticed that he didn't eat very well and he had to eat like what he called what fish mush where yeah. it had to be like very soft foods or very mushed foods. And if you think about it, a lot of those foods don't tend to have a lot of nutrition, a, yeah. lot, a lot of nutrients. So they come in already malnourished. And then we step in to make sure that we don't overcompensate, but we give them enough so that we can save their lives. So patients, when they're coming in, what we're finding is that we have to put them into a prone position, which is the they'll get strapped to the bed, flipped over to lay kind of dangling from the bed. So, Whoa. yeah. Um, that's called prone position. When we sleep normally on our back, that's called sup- supine position. Mm-hmm. So you get flipped over and this is to help kind of give more volume to the lungs so that they can breathe bigger, expand lungs better. So are they like strapped? And like Pretty much they're like, like yeah, they're dangling. It's a kind of um, very it, interesting to see because the bed is a little bit up and elevated. Is it from like the ceiling? No, they're strapped onto a bed. The bed is like, like, motorized Uh um, and then flipped over not flipped over like scary like that but Hmm. it's kind of (laughs) like hydraulics where it comes up and then spins around so So they're yeah (laughs) um, there's some what's that like bags airbags (laughs) (laughs) but they are in this prone position so that they can expand their lungs a little bit more Uh. Um, we also have to be a part of like patient needs to be elevated in a certain position so that they can get feeds so that it doesn't come back out, you know? So another example would be like if, uh, an older patient with diabetes comes in, Mm -hmm. they would need a dietitian to prescribe what's gonna be taken in so they don't Mm -hmm. die of, uh, having too much sugar in their system. Well, That's a little, okay, that's going to be a whole nother discussion because formula, basically what we're feeding when the patient comes in, Uh typically we're not going to feed to go. We're not going to feed to reach what they need. But uh, research has shown that you only need to do what we call trophic feeds or trickle feeds. They're very Mm -hmm. small amounts of feeds over an hour. It's like 20 ml. So it's less than an ounce. Yeah. 
less than one ounce every hour. That is to maintain gut health. And then that is to kind of prevent there's like a blood brain barrier to prevent further like infection. Mm -hmm. So at a rate of like 20 mLs an hour, diabetes, we don't have to specifically choose a specialized formula for them, but we got to focus on other things. And one of the things that we want to focus on is like, um, if we can to give them more protein, because they're in a catabolic breaking down state, mm -hmm. we want to kind of stabilize that. Anyways, this is going to get very complicated. So we're not going to go into that. If you can see how just me talking about the tip of the iceberg, how complex this is, this is what a dietitian does every single day. We don't just do this for COVID-19 patients. We do this for everyone. Anyone that comes in, if you come in with a, a stroke or something, most likely you're going to have altered mental status and then you also have to be sedated and then you also have to have a ventilated tube to go and breathe. Yeah. Things like that. It's like this is just what we do day to day. Now, not all dietitians do this. This is more something like critical care dietitians, yeah. which are dietitians in the um, ICU. But this would be for the purpose because like most people in the hospital other than dietitians wouldn't know this information yes so if you think about it everyone's like well there's the doctor yes there's the doctor but the doctor we can't expect them to know everything in life we can't expect them to know every single aspect of every little detail so this is where a dietitian specializes in something mm -hmm. this is what we specialize in we specialize in nutrition we specialize in metabolism and kind of preserving life yeah um so if two feeding isn't possible we're not able to feed them through a tube the other form is called uh, pn so parenteral nutrition which is just nutrition through an iv yeah and that is very high risk like form of intervention for nutrition so that is something that we do to kind of calculate all of the protein the calories the uh, dextrose, which is a form of glucose that we use. So it's like the form of sugar that our body uses. Um, and then how much lipids go into our body. These are the things that we also have to think about. When you bypass the gut to go into parenteral nutrition or IV nutrition, you bypass the gut. So all of the metabolizing, the breaking down of the nutrients is now straight up just going straight into your, your veins, straight into mm. your bloodstream. So we have to be super careful. Yeah. So we're talking like life and death kind of thing. Like, uh -huh. do we do this or do we not? Do we do this to save the patient? It's like kind of like that. I mean, I am very grateful for what I do. I interact with more of a general pediatric population. And but when I was in the adult hospital, I was a floater. So at times I would be in the ICU. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to be in the ICU. It's very intense, but I mean, it's called the intense care unit. <laughs> yeah, but and I think I I see kind of like what an insight to what goes on because uh, I'm married to you and I hear what you're talking about <laughs> all the time. Um, so I kind of hear like you know some of the struggles and some of the things you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, most people don't really understand how many specialists are in mm -hmm. the hospital. Like you just think. There's a doctor and, and a there's nurse. nurses. That's and it. Nurses take care of you. The nurses are like the workers and the doctors like the guy giving orders and the one doing cutting people up. Oh, yeah. Uh, but is, you don't understand yeah. that like doctors specialize in certain things. Yeah. You don't there's know. like doctors, literally doctors who specialize in the, the gut. Yeah. Doctors who specialize in hormones. Doctors who specialize in surgery, mm -hmm. every single thing. Doctors who specialize in the lungs. Like, literally, there is a specialist for everything. There's yeah. one doctor that kind of is the top doctor that calls the shots. But then that doctor calls the shots. But then he consults all these people who specialize in other things. There's even doctors that specialize in something like engineering and suddenly have a niche to start giving health advice <laughs> there is <laughs> which one's that i don't know i know there's, there's a, a lot of doctors there's that... people who have phds and then they, yeah, they call themselves a doctor and then it's like I'm doctor of nutrition i was like excuse me i don't think you know what you're talking about that fool has a doctorate in math what does he know about the gut <laughs> that that fool has a doctorate in dance 
What does he oh, know yeah. about nutrition? Excuse me? You're trying to tell me, oh, Dr. Danceboppets <laughs> <laughs> is going to give advice because he has the title doctor before his name. Give advice about nutrition. Mm. I would not trust a dance doctor for my general health. Who knows? He has a doctor in front of his, uh, he has a DR dot Mabopets. Man. Dance Mabopets. But I would trust him in TikTok moves. So <laughs> probably school everybody. Prescribe me some TikTok moves. Yeah, prescribe. <laughs> yeah. You know what else besides like all this scary, scary stuff online? Mm -hmm. I've noticed an influx of really bad dancers. <laughs> <laughs> like, me? No, no, okay. not you. You're an amazing dancer. Oh yeah, sure. But oh. I think like because you know everyone's bored at home, like just the they want to. They're like, oh, I can. I could be a dancer now on TikTok. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they post it. I'm like, you're really bad. That's so interesting. Cause then you're, you're talking about like people who are actually like supposedly really good or <laughs> what it's is the mix. context? Like, of it's this? just like TikTok reveals how many bad dancers are your friends. Are you on TikTok? <laughs> I'd have a TikTok. Okay. <laughs> and are you one of those people? I probably am. I'm going to go on TikTok now. Okay. But yeah. So if you know any kind of, Oh, anyone that works in the hospital and if they're still going to work, please ask them instead of saying, why are you still going to work? Please just ask them, what are you doing right now? What's going on? How are you keeping safe? Ask them how their mental health is. I'm sitting here. I'm fine right now, but I can tell you almost every single day I come home with so much stress. I come home and I'm just like, at the verge of breaking down because I honestly don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. So if you know anyone that works in the hospital and doing whatever they're doing, please don't say, well, they do these patients really need to lose weight right now? Please don't say that. I'm telling you what a dietitian does. I can't tell you what a physical therapist does. I can't tell you what an occupational therapist does. But I know that there are still other patients in the hospital that need all of these other types of specialties. So if you know someone that works in the hospital, give them a virtual hug. Give them a hug from a distance. Call them and check in on them. We're not that okay. I mean, we tell you we're okay, but inside of our head, we're a little bit not <laughs> crazy <laughs> vince check in on your friends check in make on sure your they're friends. okay if you have the audacity to ask me again is it important for patients to lose weight right now or trust that stockalin's gonna come out <laughs> <laughs> i wish you would <laughs> <laughs> yeah i won't say it <laughs> right but if you know someone and you really, really want to care about what they do and you want them to be safe and you want them to kind of just have ease in their work, tell them you appreciate them. Tell them, even if you just say, hi, what's going on? Anything. They need some. Honestly, it's interesting because I come home every day and then Vince could see that I'm pretty high strung. Um, from just having to deal with like working with people, being in a hospital. I interact with Vince, but sometimes it's, a, it's nice because he's here. But there are some people who don't have someone home with them. So check in on them. Just say hi. Um, I hope you're doing well. And if you got extra max, mask stash, go donate to the hospital. Yes, please donate to the hospital. Because my wife didn't have masks for a while. I did not. I um, Our hospital was pretty short, so we all didn't have masks to wear for several weeks um, unless I was going into a specific room where I needed to wear a mask. I was starting to avoid going into rooms. Like I have cystic fibrosis patients that I was going to see, and I was like, I am not stepping foot into that room. Now, cystic fibrosis is a condition where they are very high risk patient population. I remember just stepping, literally didn't even step into the room. I stood outside the door mm -hmm. and I spoke loudly to them. Yeah, They were a good 20 feet away from me. I spoke to, I think, a respiratory therapist. Shout out to respiratory therapist right now. Your work's appreciated. But I literally said, how are you eating? How are you drinking? Have you tried your supplements? And then just checked in to make sure that things were okay. They were getting nutrition. And then I was like, I'm not going in the room. 
because I didn't have a mask. I didn't have any way of protecting them from anything that was on my body. And on top of that, I didn't want to waste any resources we had. So I didn't have any masks for quite some time. We were told to not wear masks. And then finally, this was it this week, we got a generous donation. And now we're allowed to wear masks. But we are sanctioned very, very little. Like literally, you're allowed to wear one mask the entire day unless you get it dirty. They're just the normal mask. They're like the normal the... surgical mask, but yeah. I'm walking around in the hospital with it now. So that is a little bit more secure. But if you do have some, please donate it. Please drop it off. Please give it to someone. Drop it off at a hospital. If you don't want to interact with them, you literally could like probably wherever you want to drop it off, roll up put it outside of your car, point at it or something and drive off and they'll come get it. I know at my hospital, Long Beach Memorial Medical Center, Memorial Care in Long Beach, um, we are accepting donations at the Todd Cancer Pavilion, which is located right next to our hospital. It is connected to our hospital, but the parking lot is right outside of our hospital. So you can drop it off at the Todd Cancer Pavilion and donate some masks if you would like to. That is today's episode on the Healthy Conscience Podcast. Um, just a little bit talk on what dietitians do and please check in on your friends who are in healthcare. And make sure you stay inside and stay healthy. Stay well. Wash your hands. And, and don't forget the most, not, not the most important thing, but an important thing. Don't forget to brush your teeth. <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Conscience Podcast. Uh, click subscribe and follow us for future episodes. Peace out.